Hey guys, welcome back to Willow Ridge Acres. Welcome back to another puppy live stream here. Uh, Jeff and Michelle joining you live, and we've got Millie's puppies and May's puppies uh, right here with you as well. And uh, I see we already have several people uh, chatting in the live chat. Awesome, awesome. I see Edwards there, uh, so he's tuning in. And uh, we've got Marsha uh, from Georgia. We've got Phil says standing by with Jenna and Tucker to watch the puppies from Kentucky. And yeah, yeah, Edward said, uh, Edward and Marley in Connecticut checking in. Awesome, awesome. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the puppies are getting a lot bigger. Um, Millie's puppies are all nursing right now. Uh, Melissa, our daughter, just changed out the whelping pads, but the puppy's favorite thing to do right after the whelping pad gets changed out is to pee on it. So, <laughs> but uh, they got all wound up from being out of the whelping box while the whelping pad was being changed. And now Millie is uh, nursing hers. And mm -hmm. you'll get a good look at hers pretty soon here. Uh, they've gotten quite a bit bigger since last week. They, they've all got their eyes open. Um, it's debatable what they can see or where they can't see just yet. I feel like they still can't like really see clearly yet, but what do you think? They can see. They can see yeah. like a hundred percent. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't think they can yet. I, I don't think they can like really focus yet. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, May's puppies are up and starting to learn how to walk and stuff. And uh, a couple of them are starting to just barely open their eyes. They can definitely see shadows. Who, Maze? Shadows, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. Awesome, awesome. If you guys have any questions, uh, drop them in the live chat. We'd love to answer any questions you might have or, uh, you know, just kind of talk back and forth. Let's see. Uh, we got a good question here from Jerry. said, why do some have masks? Masks. Masks. They're called badger, badger marks. Yeah, they're called badger markings. Do you want to answer that one? Uh, genetics. <laughs> um, May had badger markings, so she passed that on to her puppies. If you look at even some of these, right, if you know offhand which one, mm -hmm. they have really light, they can have really light markings. So even though Great Pyrenees appear to be all white, they really do have some kind of variations in coloring so in certain dogs that characteristic is just a lot stronger but we we need to keep like a picture of may where you can just like handy it. yeah 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 <clears throat> yeah I, I can pull up a picture of may here in a second uh and share with you like what she looked like when she was a puppy when we first got her uh at eight weeks but um <clears throat> The badger markings tend to fade over time. Oh, we have actually... some of them will stay, but we haven't had one that, that was it last week that we wondered if you do a badger mark and a badger mark. That they yeah, have... yeah, I'm sure it's it's really just uh, genetics, but you know we we've been curious like maybe if you have uh, you know a sire and a dam uh, that are both they both have badger markings if the tendency is greater for their puppies to keep the badger markings long term and i'm getting a call from a telemarketer <laughs> uh, so yeah i'm not sure um you know which ones keep their their markings more than others but hey we got a super chat from ed he said uh let's start the super chats i must have watched the puppy breath short a hundred times <laughs> so darn cute uh puppy breath is the best it really is I didn't consent to that filming of my all my necks. <laughs> you looked beautiful. <laughs> you look beautiful. That's so embarrassing. Jerry said, uh, "Beautiful markings." Thank you for explaining it. Yeah, we'll show you. Uh, you know, kind of more uh, like individuals. Uh, we'll have Melissa, our daughter, hold each puppy up to the camera here in a in a few minutes Don't after they're done a, nursing. Uh, Post on our thing about badger marks. Yeah, they, they can't. They, it's real specific what the breed standards are for them. Like what percentage of the body can be covering it? What yep. colors are allowed to be included? Because you you'll see some uh, Great Pyrenees Anatolian. Is that what it's called? Yeah, mixes that appear to be a Great Pyrenees with badger marks, but 
the coloring is off and so that's just the anatolian transferring in um yeah i just posted in the live chat a uh, link to our most recent blog post and uh talking about uh great pyrenees and badger markings and on that blog post if you click in open it up in a you know different tab or whatever or you're watching online or on, on your um your phone or something uh you can look at it later but there's some pictures of may when we first got her um and then pictures of some of her puppies from last year um and you know kind of how they uh how they faded over time actually i think i can here check this out i'll just show you guys on the live stream i forgot about this let me <clears throat> here we go i forgot that we can do this Boom. Can you guys see that there? So um, this is that blog post. And the this is one of Millie's pup or May's puppies from last year. And this is actually what May looked like when she was, you know, when we first got her at eight weeks. Uh, so you can see she had a little bit on her side and, uh, you know, some on her ears and on her on her head and on her, you know, around her eyes. Um, but I'm sure, you know, unfortunately, the breeder we got her from, they didn't do puppy puppy live streams every single week. Uh, we didn't get any pictures of her when she was a week old or, you know, younger than, you know, seven weeks old. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if May's uh, badger markings were even darker than this before we brought her home. Um, but then uh, I should have put I'll, I'll edit this blog post and uh, put some you know, pictures of May as she got older as well. Mm -hmm. But here's some of her puppies from last year. And this was at three weeks old, one of them. And again, at five weeks old, you can start seeing that they're already fading. And again, at eight weeks old, and um, they faded quite a bit. And then that's actually the same puppy now at a year old. And you can see this, you can barely see the tan on her ears. And that's, that's kind of what May looks like as well. Mm -hmm. So they just look kind of dirty. But if you actually <laughs> look like really close, we could do like a really close shot of May. She's got a patch in the back that she had when she was a puppy that has like black hairs growing out of it. Yeah. You just have to look like really close to see yeah. it. Yeah. So a lot of them, uh, you know, are, are all white or pure white is what you call them. Um, but uh, they can also have those badger markings. But the, the breed standard is very specific on where those colors can be and what colors it can be. Um, usually around the head and, and like at the base of the tail and stuff. So yeah, uh, Nicole is tuning in. She has two of the puppies from uh, our litters last year. And she said, Daisy lost her badger markings. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, they're super cute when they're puppies. Um, they and usually they go pretty quick. Um, they're, they're some of the first ones picked when when we start doing so, uh, puppy selections. But we we are very upfront and honest with people that uh, you know, don't fall too much in love with those badger markings because they are most likely going to fade mm -hmm. by the time she's um, just a year old. Ed, Edward said Millie's pups mm -hmm. have their tail yes. curled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melissa was uh, talking about that just earlier because somebody asked, I think last week, like at what age do they start curling their tail? It must be around three weeks because that's how old uh, Millie's are. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's some science behind that because they're walking so maybe it helps them with, their with balance. the balance and stuff that's true that's true let's see we got more people saying where they're watching from uh, m everett said it's fun to watch the puppies zero in on the moms hi from wichita yeah yep they definitely know where uh the scent of mama and how to how to get to her grandma door is watching she says monkey's here thanks for watching <clears throat> Humble, Humble Oats said they are precious. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Jenna's watching. She has a deposit on one of the pups. She said, uh, such perfect, perfect babies. I love that you take time to share them with us. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we do it. You know, we, we enjoy doing this, but we also kind of do it because um, we we wish we wish, uh, you know, the breeders that we bought ours from would have done something like this. So it's just, we kind of do it as a service really. And um, 
know, just with transparency of our breeding program and, and how we care for our dogs and kind of what sets us apart. David Payne said, Oh my goodness. Let's, let's, uh, let's focus in on Millie's. So you can see they're starting to uh, wrestle a little bit, starting to mouth each other, and can see shadows, right? Yeah, they can. They're starting to be able to see a little bit. Shadows. Yes, yes. <laughs> Walking across. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. One of them's crawling up on on Millie's back. Yeah, they'll crawl up there and sleep. Yeah. Because there's not room for all of them next to each other anymore, so they'll crawl up there and just take their own little personal nap. Terry said they look so cuddly soft. Uh, Millie's definitely are. May's, uh, you know, at, at just two weeks old, their their coat hasn't fully, you know, really gotten fluffy just yet. But Millie's puppies are at that stage where they're starting to really get that fluffy coat. Can you guys hear them? I have the microphones off on the, on the cameras that are in, but I'm sure you can hear it on the microphone where we're sitting. I'll see if I can on there Mark. they're starting to learn how to bark too it doesn't take long what would you do <laughs> here we go there we go well let's know if you guys have any questions here let me meet that again i think i'm echoing there we go. Let us know if you have any questions, post them in the live chat. We'll be happy to answer questions you have. Let's see, we have a question here from SMCJ Jennings said, I have four week old Great Pyrenees right now, our first batch, and I'm amazed at how vocal they are. Uh, we've only ha I've only ever bred healers and Australian shepherds and weren't as vocal. Our Great Pyrenees puppies uh, normally super vocal. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, they're, <laughs> this is normal for yeah. them. Uh, we can't really speak to, you know, if they're more vocal than other breeds of puppies. This is, we've only, uh, you know, we've only ever had puppies from Great Pyrenees. Uh, we've never bred any other dogs. So, um, but yes, this is very, very normal. <laughs> Edward said, my Marley still sounds like that at walk time. <laughs> Nicole said, I miss this sweet puppy stage. These destructive one-year-olds are tiny teenagers and full of attitude and angst. <laughs> Hopefully they're not destroying too much, Nicole. Forrest said, I asked you to pick the most outgoing and adventurous pup, and you suggested Catherine in the Great Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, so Forrest got uh, two of our puppies from last year's litters, and uh, when it came time for selections, he was wanting the most outgoing. Uh, outgoing and adventurous yeah. pup and he had one of the you know first picks i love so. that he trusted us yeah yeah his pick. he was like this is what i'm looking for and we were like you need to pick pick this this one right here for us i'm assuming Catherine has um has lived up to that i'm assuming so let us know in the comments yeah and how did you make any progress on, yeah uh, leaving them yeah for us have you made any progress on leaving them you know, in different pastures on your property and are they still having, you know, some separation anxiety with that? Let us know. Phil said, how much do Millie's pups weigh now? Who's gaining weight fastest? So Millie's pups weigh five pounds right now. Yeah. Millie's puppies weigh around five pounds each right now. And let's see, oh. she's, we're referring to the, to the records right now. We only weighed one. Oh, today? Yeah, she didn't weigh all of them. Um, from May's litter, the biggest puppy is brown. Um, he was the second biggest when he was born, so he's gaining the most from May's litter. Oh, just kidding. Who's that? I said brown, but it's actually light blue. But from he, yeah. Wait, what? From May's. <laughs> from May. Uh, so, so from May's litter, the brown collar one is 
is gaining the most and, and growing the fastest so far. Uh, from Millie's litter, though, um, I don't think Melissa weighed all of Millie's just yet today, so it's hard to tell. Maybe we can do that in a little yeah, bit on the live stream. Going to weigh all of them. Let's yeah, we could do that. We could do that in just a little bit here on the live stream and then give you that answer to that question. And a net. Well, hey, if you're tuning in uh, just now, let us know. Drop a comment in the in the live chat. And let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to give you a shout out. And if you have any questions, drop them in the live chat too. We'd love to answer any questions you might have. Here's Millie's pups. I mean, May's puppies. Melissa, you want me to bring you the cereal? We're having to stand up with them. Uh, they can't fit in there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Jenna said the mamas look so good. Yeah, so definitely uh, one thing we've learned uh, in the you know few years that we've been doing this, um, the mama's first litter they tend to uh, like really blow their coat and lose a lot of weight uh, after having their first litter. So they, um, yeah, they, it takes them a, a while to kind of rebound from that. So last year, uh, May after giving birth, she, she looked pretty, pretty uh, skinny and you know, her, a lot of her fur fell out and uh, but uh, definitely, you know, May's looking a lot better this time. And um you know, we, we've experienced that with uh, Mabel's first litter. When she had her first, she blew her cup really bad. Uh, and then May was her first was last year and Millie's first. Um, they all did that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like uh, Millie's, I mean, she doesn't even look her, her coat didn't even change much. Are you calling her fat? No, I'm not calling Millie fat. <laughs> no. <laughs> she just gave birth. Give her some grace. Yes, of course. Tracy Taylor said chili in Chicago, Northwest suburbs, Illinois. I don't, we don't know anything about that right now. It's already starting to get warm here in South Texas. It's like, you know, 80 to mid eighties already. Um, it's just going to get hotter. Let's see Forrest answer. And he said, uh, Madeline has about 10 pounds on Catherine, but Kat is in charge. They discussed it yeah. again. And the other day yeah. or the other day, and most definitely Kat is still the boss. <laughs> That's interesting, though, because Catherine is Mays right. and Madeline is uh, Ma Mabel. one of Mabel's pups and Mabel like rules the roost here. So like she's yeah, that's interesting. But, but we knew that Catherine yeah. from the very beginning. Oh, was, she had that. Yes, as, like, totally. Queen bee of everybody. Yes. So when he was looking for that, that's why we suggested that's why. her. That's why. Yep. So it's good to know that she has <laughs> stayed that way, I guess. <laughs> yep. Hey, Edward, thanks again for uh, another super chat here. He said, before May's pops, pups stop feeding and steal the show, got to send Memphis that carrot Aww. fun love. <laughs> I just put more carrots for Memphis in my pickup order. For Sam's? Yeah. yeah. We buy car carrots for Memphis, our pig, in bulk. Yeah. You buy them from Sam's. He's actually getting a variety of treats just so that you know what you're contributing to because he had lost too much of his pig weight. So we are giving him a lot of stuff right now to try to get him fatter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He has a summer bod right now. So. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Marcia said, how old were May and Millie when you got them? They were both eight, eight weeks. Yeah, they were both eight weeks. Well, because we already knew... <clears throat> We had other dogs, so, you know, there was no need for us to wait. Yeah, so for, for ours, um, in our breeding program, if if the puppies are going to homes that will be, or where they're going to be uh, livestock guardians, like outside, like working dogs, um, we actually keep them till 12 weeks uh, in order to give them some, like, on-the-job training and let them, you know, experience 
all the sights and sounds and smells of the farm and get used to being around chickens and and really learn from our adult great pyrenees um i don't know that any of the breeders though that we bought ours from we we got all of ours from working do from working you know farms and and uh, you know all, all their parents were working dogs but um i don't know that any of them even offered to keep them longer than eight weeks to give them training um we probably would have taken them up on it for mac and mabel because we didn't have any before that um but yeah it's just something extra that we provide to you know our <laughs> puppies families when we got mac and mabel we just had no idea like what their actual size would be and all that and then we didn't even like set up the backyard correctly and they got out we learned a lot yeah. yep we learned a lot real quick terry said may is amazing i get it <laughs> hey I, i'm good with some dad jokes i'm good with that jenna said or asked do you have to increase feeding for moms mm -hmm. after giving birth yes yeah you want to explain so that they have free range to their food all day all night which of course we don't is it normal do. Yeah. yeah and we also make them special you know yeah we kind of spoil them a little bit That's why I ate, like, eight <laughs> Yesterday. yeah yeah they, they the get like special meals we'll they... make them like <clears throat> scrambled eggs with you know some meat and pumpkin all, all and, healthy yeah. all healthy food we're not feeding them like table scraps or anything no. but but we let them eat literally as much as they want because and then of course they have water out they're the judges of what they you know need in order to produce yeah we'll scramble them up some uh some fresh you know eggs from our farm um they they enjoy that and then it will supplement with some uh some like pumpkin mm -hmm. um it's like pie filling right no no oh <laughs> i don't know it's just like canned pumpkin yes it's not seasoned it's not oh like okay yeah it's not seasoned of course i don't make pumpkin pies what do i look like it has a pie on the front but that's like buying cherries and saying that it's <laughs> pie oh yeah <laughs> marcia said both moms are not fat that. they are fluffy yeah. that's right very fluffy they're big big bones. they're big bone <laughs> yeah phil said mid 50s windy and afternoon showers mm -hmm. here in kentucky we're we're still getting um quite a bit of rain yeah. it's, it's been um kind of off and on rain here um uh, not normal in south texas but it's good for uh we got grass growing yeah, or a, a lot of weeds yes terry said 38 here in michigan yesterday 42 mm -hmm. today that's cold mm -hmm. that's cold for for beginning of may mm -hmm. everett said do uh the moms teach the pups any bathroom habits or do they just let it fly everything looks so clean a tribute to you guys oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're still at the age where their moms like eat their droppings and all that sort of thing. Um, and that should be ending probably in the next, well, Millie's pups will be a month next week. And then May's are about 10 days behind. So they'll start kind of, we'll intentionally take them outside after, because we'll start introducing um, wet not like wet food, but wet and wet. And yeah, like soaked them. or soaked. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll soak uh, like you know the dog kibble that they're going yeah. to eat in water to where it's like just you know super soft, and then allow them to eat. And we yeah. usually soak it in uh, like we goat's milk. milk. And then we'll take them out after that. But yeah, we change the whelping box um, pads out several times. It at first it's not as bad it's like a once a day thing and now we're at the point where it's like twice a day then it's gonna be three times a day then we'll transition them out of the whelping boxes into a more open area and then that is complete and utter chaos shuffling everyone outside for the times that you know they're going to be using the bathroom and yep. then getting them back in and then, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we we do a lot we're very intentional to try to keep uh their whelping boxes as clean as possible uh, right be literally minutes before the live stream started, um, Melissa did whelping uh, pad changes, but their favorite time to pee is literally right after you let them back in the whelping box. So if you see like in Millie's like, 
you know, right on the floor, right in front of her. They've already peed, but yeah. it happens. But uh, <clears throat> doing lots of laundry for sure. Yeah, we we clean their you know whelping pads. We also uh, keep like old beach towels, and we'll lay those in there as well to, you know, just try to keep it as clean as possible. <laughs> Grandma Dor said, "Poor Jeff." Mm. Thank you, thank you. I have somebody on my side. Thank you. <laughs> Let us know if you guys have any questions. Drop them in the live chat. What'd you say, Melissa? What did I miss? I don't know. She just said, "Poor Jeff." <laughs> I think because. I think mom was giving me some trouble over here. Mm. That never happens. Your leg hair is like making me hot. No way. <laughs> no way. He's like a human like heater. <laughs> Melissa, you want to start uh, showing like individual puppies? Do you want to show everyone your chin too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Melissa got a hickey on her on her chin <laughs> luckily it wasn't from a little boy oh. <laughs> do you know who it was went for it yeah, I was like, no, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. oh we got we got a question here real quick terry said question can great pyrenees have an occasional carrot so we feed our dogs carrots as treats if they'll eat them. Um, as long as they're not choking on the carrot or anything like that. Who was it? Was it uh, Rosie that was just eating, like swallowing them whole? One of our inside dogs at one point was like just swallowing the whole carrot. So we oh, cut her like off. Like well, the little baby yeah. carrot. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that was self-explanatory. I, but... I was actually like impressed. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyways but she's better now but yeah i mean carrots like if they'll eat them like our dogs are weird we throw vegetables out for the chickens like all the time and it's just funny to see like what the dogs they love like lettuce which is just like why i don't yeah. know yeah i would i would say that's fine phil said the puppy with melissa is really digging all that attention oh, yeah. so do you who do you have there melissa so that's Mr. Black from Millie's Litter. You can see that, you know, even at this age, even at three and a half weeks old, uh, they can be pretty chill, pretty calm. Yeah, they really just get antsy when they are hungry. Yep. That's pretty much about it. But we're starting to see a little bit of playtime with them, and they're vocal during that time, but... <laughs> It looks like all the others are sleeping. Yeah. All right. So we won't wake the other ones up just yet. <laughs> we'll look at uh, Maze. Maze. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go in there with Maze and show them? Look at that one. It's like, I'm going to continue eating. I don't know yep. about the rest of you. <clears throat> Marsha said polar bear cubs. That's right. Who you got there? That's Mr. Green from um, May's Litter. Mr. Green has uh, interesting markings. He has like the little dot in the center of his head. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not a fan of the camera. You can move the camera if you need to, Melissa. And he weighs about two and a half pounds. Mr. Green weighs about two and a half pounds, Michelle said. Yeah, he's one of the smaller ones. Let's see, Forrest answered a question earlier, or that we asked earlier. Uh, he said, I decided not to separate them for long periods of time uh, for a few mm -hmm. months. I've seen foxes running the fence lines a few times this week. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, chase off the foxes. They'll be able to hold their own against that. He said, uh, I'm, I'm working with them by separating one while working with the other yeah. and then swapping. That's Perfect. Yeah, that works great. Awesome, awesome. He said, the one left behind doesn't like it, but they're getting used to it. I'm working on leash training for yes. when I need to take them from the farm. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
Even a little bit of exposure will go a really long way. Yeah. For us, you'll find that uh, when you do have to take them from the farm, like say to the vet or something, uh, other people freak out about how big they are. Yeah. Where, you know, Even when they're not you just get so used to them, you know, ha owning them and having a big dog. And then you get them out in public and people really, um, you know, they're amazed by how big of dogs they are. It's crazy. All right. You want to show more of May's pups? That one's Mr. Blue from May's litter. He's almost three pounds. Mr. Blue is, is almost uh, three pounds. Mr. Light Blue is right there. I think uh, Mr. Light Blue has been the most vocal, yes? And he's almost three and a half pounds. He's almost three and a half pounds. He's vocal because he's big. Because he's big and he's, he's always hungry. wanting to eat. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. That one's Miss Purple. So their maze puppies are still at the stage where anytime you pick them up, they're ready to like root around and yeah. try to nurse. That's what happened on Moles' chin. Yes. Yeah. So if you weren't, uh, if you didn't hear what happened to Melissa's chin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you got to show it. She came in the house the other day. She has a hickey. Have like, you even seen it yet? She has a, a, a little hickey right here on her chin because as she was nursing or not, no. as she was, as she was <laughs> bottle feeding one of the puppies, uh, it started like nursing on her chin and she allowed it to do it for too but long. I think she was like taking a nap and then she came in the house and I was like, what is on your chin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we got another super chat uh, from Jenna. Thank you so much, Jenna. We appreciate the love and support. She said, a little kibble donation. <laughs> Edward, I, I, I apologize, if man. I I, your hey, nursing, word? <laughs> we love our animals, but not Yes, not that would be a little weird. Just just a little bit. She's like hiding. She's not going to participate. Now she's all embarrassed. All right, let's. Which one's this? That's Miss Purple from May. May's litter. She has like the heart on her head markings. Can you see him? Yeah. <laughs> I I know Edward. I know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I know. Who's this? Red. Knocking the camera over. That's Miss Red. And you can see, uh, like on Miss Red's, uh, their nose, um, May's puppies in the past week, their noses are starting to turn black. So it kind of lo looks almost like freckles at first. Mm -hmm. um, but then their nose goes, you know, completely black. There's Mr. Brown from May's Litter. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh yeah, this this is one of uh May's pups that is starting to open his eyes already. It's Mr. Orange. They they won't stay still long enough. You, you guys don't understand if you if you watch our or if you uh, you know, if you if you keep your eye on our website yeah. and, and see how we do uh, the weekly uh, puppy portraits, at when they're at this age that May's puppies are at, there it's difficult to get a, a still and in focus yeah. shot of them because when you're holding them, all they want to do is like they're like, "Where's mama? Where's mama?" and they're ready to yeah. nurse. It's like holding a snake yes. almost. Yes. Yeah. So it takes us a little bit to get those pictures to get them to. Settle down just a little bit, but Miss Pink, yep, from Maze Litter. I think she is, uh, she's, not, she's the second smallest. We got a comment here, uh, from Crystal said, uh, I found your channel when I was getting a great Pyrenees puppy myself and was doing research. She is now three months old and huge. I appreciate all you share. 
Awesome, awesome. Awkward, where, like where their head fluff is in. Like oh yeah, three have months. Just like awkward look to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, we appreciate you tuning in and watching. Who's this? Miss Gray. This is Miss Gray. She's the smallest. She's the smallest one from May's litter, but she's not super small. No. She's petite. Four said, my pups like to eat dried grapes. I'm raising awareness of this treat. <laughs> Are you? Are they allowed to eat dried grapes? I don't. I don't know. I. I mean, it sounds like it's a dad joke, but I don't know. That's a good question. I know they're not supposed to eat like normal grapes, right? Yeah, I don't know. You're gonna have to Google that. Yeah, we're gonna have to Google that. Hey, Edward, another super chat. Thank you so much. He said for the puppy food fund. Awesome. Hey, we we go through a lot of dog food uh, as soon as they start eating dog food. So. That will help Even big time. Thank you. Yes. When people find out how much we spend on dog food, they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Our dog food uh, budget is pretty high. Which one's this? <laughs> Mr. Black. He's the one. See how dark his Yeah, he's got really dark. Uh, his, it looks like he drew eyebrows on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to yeah. see if like he... Uh, keep some of his. <laughs> yeah, he does look like he has eyebrows. It's awesome. Like, he looks so mad. Yeah. <laughs> when you give Terry said, question, to... how long does it take to do all the puppy portraits? Uh, uh, 20 minutes, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, about 20 minutes. We have it down to like a system. Uh, Melissa will bring, um, we have like a wagon that she brings the puppies out in. And then we keep like a... Uh, uh, like a note sheet and a pen. And then she, you know, brings one up one at a time, holds it. And I take the picture. And then once I get a good one, I read out like the file number, you know, like whatever image number it was like 2046 or whatever. And then she'll write like blue 2046. And then that way, when I go to like upload them to the website, I know which one is which, um, we have a whole system for yeah. it. <laughs> a lot of trial and error there. Yes. Yes. Jenna said, I call that the Einstein look. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's the Einstein look? The eyebrows. Oh, the eyebrows? Yeah. Crystal's tuning in said, I've been searching for one for our chickens and really want one. They're precious. Well, hey, uh, I mean, if, you, if you're patient um, and, you know, you want one of ours, go ahead and join our waiting list yeah, on our I website. Yeah, have a little bit well not an answer but you know how we talked about how here locally the mix between them is it the anatolian or anatolian anatolian, anatolian is really popular our kids had a dentist appointment yesterday in one of the new techs is that what they're called anyway she hygienist she <coughs> was like oh yeah i have a great pyrenees anatolian mix and i asked her i said you know so why do you mix like them together and she was like oh i don't know that's just how we got it and i asked her i said do they chase your chickens and she's like sometimes and i was like yeah so yeah. i researched it a little bit <laughs> uh down here in south texas we get all you know you find a lot of people that mix great pyrenees with anatolian shepherds uh anatolian shepherd is also a livestock guardian dog um but uh when when you research the different the two different breeds um a big place where they differ is anatolian shepherds are known to be a little more aggressive um great pyrenees are not they're they're guard dogs but they're not aggressive they they'll bark but they're not going to try to attack anything really um and an anatolian shepherd have a little bit higher of a prey drive and um and a, a little more willingness to attack uh, which i guess is desirable by some people in a guard dog um personally I, I wouldn't want that i wouldn't you know i wouldn't want an aggressive dog around my kids and stuff um but apparently people will you know have those breed together like a a mix mm -hmm. uh to introduce some of that aggressiveness to the great pyrenees but then i wouldn't be surprised if uh you have a a mix with an anatolian shepherd and a great pyrenees if 
they uh, chase you know your your chickens mm -hmm. more because of that. So just something to watch out for. Yeah, I didn't get any answers. I mean, she was just pretty much like, "That's how we got it." Yeah. Maybe some of it is also like living in Texas, how it's hot. I know that's right. shorter. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Forrest said it was a dad joke. Uh, He's raising awareness. <laughs> See, I caught it. I ca I'm telling you, you can't slip a, a dad joke by me. You can't. Yes. Let's see. We got another super chat here. Joanne, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. We appreciate it. Didn't even put a comment. Yeah. Did get to comment? Leave a comment on it? Yes. Yeah, I don't think there was a comment on it. She commented earlier. She said, Mr. Black's eyebrows, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> they are so I, good. I'm, I, I want to see if he keeps those. I just those. couldn't remember which one it was, but I knew there was one of them that had really, yeah. really dark. Yeah. See, Crystal said she is a big, adorable, Aww. adorable. Her name is Freya. Uh, one of our puppies from uh, last year's litters that went uh, all the way up to Colorado uh, is named Freya. Yeah. But uh, Crystal said we have a 100-acre farm with cows, but she is an indoor house pet. <gasps> okay, Crystal, I'm jealous. I yeah. wish we had a 100-acre farm. At some point, maybe uh, down the road, that's a, a dream. We would love to have more acreage here. So. But she said, only issue so far is her barking at me, which is being worked on. She barks at you? Maybe playing. Yeah, maybe just playing. Yeah. Let us know in the comments what you mean by barking at you. Maybe it's something we can we can help you with. Four said uh, that his pups do eat whole raw chicken legs a few times a week. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> No, Ours eat raw chicken eggs. Yes. <laughs> what did she say, Melissa? Your chickens? <laughs> yeah, sheep, right? Oh, hey, Jenna said that uh, the three-month puppy hair does yeah. look like oh, Einstein's yes, hair. Yes, 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 that's true. It's so true. <laughs> yes, it, they almost get like a the little poofy, like white yes. fro. as yeah, cute. <clears throat> Crystal said, is the barking at owners a common issue for being indoors? It's playful, yeah. but can be a bit much at times. Uh, that's a good question. You know, from we, we wouldn't really be able to answer that from experience. Uh, we haven't really had ours inside for long periods of time. Uh, some Sometimes when the mamas are on maternity leave, we'll let them come inside to take a break. Yes? Yeah, we did. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we, we did have one uh, kind of a rescue. She's closer to her. Well, she's a year now. Yeah. And we, we had her inside for a little bit, but she didn't really bark at us, did she? She like would bark it's out the just window more and stuff. Of a play, you know. I've, that's and true. I think she said, wasn't it three months old? Yeah. That's still really, really young. Yeah, three I months would, is young. But I mean, you can correct those behaviors, and now is a good time to start doing that. Um, for any behaviors we don't want, our go-to is to go like and like distract them with like snapping or even like you know like a neck like mm. <laughs> um, to get them to stop. But the thing with that is you have to be like super consistent. Yeah, I would venture to guess that that may be just a young puppy thing. I would think so too. All the puppies are crashed out right now. They've all nursed and uh, they're in their <laughs> Their, their milk coma. <laughs> yeah, and they're dreaming. dreaming. Yep. That one's like really dreaming. <laughs> and Millie's puppies are all just kind of spread out. Some of them are like probably right up underneath the camera. Yeah. We'll show Millie's puppies individually in just a little bit here. It's like when you have a baby, you don't wake them up. That's right. Melissa's trying to move the camera to where we can see Millie's puppies a little bit better. Phil said, Tucker only barks when he sees cows or other yeah. animals outside the windows. Yep. Yeah, you know, we've explained on um, our live chats before. By the way, we still have those dang birds in the garage. If you hear that, that's not the puppies chirping. That's We have uh, barn yeah. swallows or something that built a nest uh, somewhere in the top of the garage. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Great Pyrenees sometimes can get a bad rap for like 
you know, barking a lot or barking all the time. But, you know, it's, it hasn't been our experience that like they just bark for no reason. Um, they don't just like like lay down and just like incessantly like anxiously bark unless there's a reason why they're doing it. You know, um, like right now, you know, our, our adult, uh, you know, they're out there on our property and we would hear them if they're barking and they haven't barked this whole time. But if they see like a hawk fly over or, um, you know, something that they perceive as a threat, they'll start barking. The but they don't just donkey. like, yeah, the neighbor's donkey. They don't like the neighbor's donkey. But um, but they don't just like lay out there and just bark for no reason. <laughs> yep, Phil said milk comas. That's right. Yeah, that's cute. Cuddle, cuddle up with mama. <laughs> Terry says, so if it works to correct Jeff, it will work on Great Pyrenees. <laughs> the, Pretty the... much. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal said, that's what I'm thinking. And I'm sure because she's so young, it will calm down. But yes, yeah. consistency on it. Yep. She said, it seems like a playful behavior or attention behavior uh, when she wants pet. Yeah. Who do you have there? Yeah, I mean, they can be pretty bossy. Who do you have there? Think. You can see how fluffy they're getting already. Like, the fur is like, you can, like, lose your hand in it already. like a real baby yes you gotta like move them around to get them to calm down let us know if you guys have any other questions drop them in the live chat we'd love to answer any questions you might have <laughs> taking naps to the sweet sounds of birds mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't let that puppy suck on your on your chin. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you a hickey. Teeth. We gotta show Melissa's. No. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, she wants me to do it. <laughs> Did it work? Yes. Good. Good. Hello. What was it, toe beans? Yep, yep. Grandma Dora said, is Millie taking a break? Yeah, she's outside. Yes, Millie is at the point where she feeds, sleeps, and then she's outside most of the time. Just... A lot of times she's, she's just laying on her porch. Yeah. Taking a break. Doing her thing outside. Yep. We've been having a goat's over on this bigger you know this well the, the house side the of our property side. <clears throat> letting so them rain yeah graze over here free range so they the two moms have been going out and kind of working a little bit with the the goats out monty is not a huge fan our uh one goat maverick is not very friendly so he keeps trying to book monty and today Monty wasn't having it. Monty was barking at him, but it was like a bark I've never heard before. And he was just not having any any part of it. Was that that one just now barking? It's going to go wake everyone else up. Yeah. Mr. Green. So this is the age when we really start to see some of their personalities coming out. Yep. If they're little terrors or you know are they the instigator or <clears throat> are they a little more passive yeah. right <clears throat> we got another super chat from joanne she said this is for melissa for all her hard work what do you say melissa <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
Melissa does get paid for all of her hard work. <laughs> Melissa said thank you, but she's not coming on the camera. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> she's not following me. <laughs> Just go like this. Just hide it. Just... Yes. You have to come and say thank you. It's so cute. <laughs> Are you can come say thank you. <laughs> Four said, my two don't bark much during the day, but early evening when the prey animals start to move, I can hear them while I'm inside the house. That's great. That's exactly that's exactly what they should do. Yeah. They're working. <laughs> Look at Joanne said. <laughs> hey, Melissa, Joanne said I wanted to see the hickey. No. Come on, you can show. <laughs> No, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Just come over like this and just say hi, and and say thank you. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It just looks like she like was skateboarding and like fell a little. Yeah, bit. just a little bit. <laughs> Crystal said, "So cute." That's so cute. <laughs> I don't think it takes long, like, for them to like no, give you a hickey they have though. Such a strong suction at this. Yeah. Point. Yeah. How long was it doing it? Like. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> for Melissa said for. Uh, <laughs> Melissa Forrest said, "Let us see. It's not like the internet is forever." It is. <laughs> I never thought about that. Ugh, yeah. Creepy. Oh, gosh. Phil said, Tucker barks at chipmunks and squirrels running around in his yard. We don't get chipmunks here. Chipmunks. Yeah, but we Just get... Just a few squirrels, really. Yeah, we don't... Yeah, we have some squirrels, though. And the squirrels like to taunt our dogs. They'll, like, jump off the... Like, jump down the tree and, like, chirp at them or whatever, like, you know, the sounds that squirrels make. And then they'll, like taunt the dogs to where the dogs chase them up the tree and then they'll like stand up in the tree and taunt them the whole time and the dogs are like if you come down here i'm gonna tear you up they actually got one one time well you were at camp yeah <laughs> that was fun and then i had to they caught one of them one we time told that story before yep <clears throat> terry said arrows is a night barker mostly oh. deer raccoon neighbors cats and roaming dogs all good reasons mm -hmm. to bark they just take too long to move yeah. along so yeah. he keeps barking yeah yep we actually get got used to it and we've asked our neighbors before and they're like they don't hear it anymore either and then the one across the street said that they feel safer knowing that we have like our dogs out but yeah i <clears throat> can actually hear them barking a lot and then it's like they have like a different bark if it's like something really and then you'll like go outside and check but like they're normal just kind of like i feel like almost like if a scent blows in the breeze they might like bark to just like a warning you know yeah yep i was I, i'm half tempted to share the skunk story but i don't know if it's fully pg after the other things that you've said, <laughs> I think it's probably safe. I, I think I shared it once before, but you no. Know, speaking of barking and like knowing their different barks, uh, one time uh, after Millie uh, had a litter and she was on like maternity leave and over on this side of the property, like our, our house side, um, I was, you know, I was sleeping in in uh, middle of the night and all of a sudden I hear Millie barking like, like, not the normal bark and i thought you know there must have been like a deer in the yard or something and she just is trying to like scare it off but it got louder and it was like literally right outside uh you know our, our master bedroom window like right outside there so it, it was like super loud and finally i'm like she's not stopping i need to get up and see what's going on <clears throat> so i go out on our back porch you know right around that same area and she's got a skunk like cor like cornered inside like in the bottom of this like tree bush that's right there by the corner of our um of our bedroom actually uh back up just once like a minute here in the story 
uh, now that I'm like telling the story again, I'm remembering all the details. No, I heard her barking. I'm like, it's it's early in the morning. I didn't want to like get up, but then all of a sudden I smelled a skunk. I smelt it and I was like, oh my gosh, like she probably got sprayed. So I go out there to like see what's going on. And um, she's got it like cornered underneath this bush right there. And she just won't stop barking at it. So I was like, I'm gonna have to shoot this skunk or something. So I go back inside and get uh, my little like 22 uh, rifle. And I go out there with my 22 and uh, just in my boxers. And um, at that point, then the skunk had its like business end pointed towards me. And I was like, I've, it's like now or never. Like I, I've got to like take the shot or else it's going to like shoot me, if you know what I mean. Um, so I, I shot at it and all of a sudden I, I didn't see it anymore. And then I was like, well, I got him, right? But then I see him like this skunk like scurrying away but like wounded, but like scurrying away, like down the backside of our property towards the fence. I like racked another round and was like siding it up to shoot it again. But then I had this thought, like a couple of things like went through my mind. I'm like, it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm sure I already like probably spooked the neighbors. They're hearing like a gunshot at three in the morning. I don't want to do it again. If not, if I don't need to. And if I kill this, skunk on our property then i have to deal with it so i was like if it makes its way and like over the fence and dies somewhere way back in the woods then i don't have to deal with it <laughs> so that's what it did like it went over the fence and but uh i keep telling the kids like if they ever find a skunk with two buttholes that's the one that i shot <laughs> no, that's the story <laughs> moral in the story is they have a different bark if it's actually right in the yard that's right i knew from the bark that was that was the whole point of the story is i knew from the bark that millie had something like right in our yeah. like you know in, in our property it wasn't something just like a, home a far happened. away thing so hearing him his account of the story was just yeah she wasn't home for it <laughs> you would have like been cracking up laughing i'm sure <laughs> yeah <clears throat> let's see joanne said uh, my dog barks at butterflies. She needs a farm. Uh, we live in the neighborhood. Yeah. She has a yard on the lake, but she needs more work. Mabel hates butterflies. Yep. Mabel barks at butterflies big time to you. And we, there's like a season, uh, yeah. every year here in, in, yeah, like a butterfly migration where we get a ton of them and she it's loses her mind. Yeah. <laughs> she hates butterflies. Jenna said, I actually love the sound of their bark. It makes me feel safe, mm. deep and comforting. Yeah, yeah. It takes a little getting used to because, you know, their their bark can can travel a bit. And but uh, I, I agree. Um, it makes me feel like, you know, they, they've got it protected. Right. And, you know, even even protection on our property for us, because uh, it's like an early detection uh, at our church one time, somebody you know, just jokingly, I, I forgot what we were even oh, joking yeah, about, yeah. but we were, they, they were, were they were talking about over here and drop something off. Yeah. They were talking about like getting us something or, or something. And I was like, no, you don't have to do that. And they were like, well, I know where you live. We'll sneak over there and, you know, sneak and, and drop it off on your porch. I was like, yeah, you're not luck. sneaking past <laughs> six great Pyrenees. Like it's not going to happen. We'll hear it. Like you, you can't sneak onto our property. And that's one of the things we love, you know, it, it definitely helps yeah. us feel safe. Yeah. It's like our, our little uh, alarm system, right? Terry said, uh, the arrows barks at butterflies as well, and he tries to play with mm -hmm. them, which always turns out badly yeah. for the butterfly. Yep. Oopsies. <laughs> Very fragile friend. Uh, one of our inside dogs, um, Rosie, our blue healer, will actually kill flies. She does. That they like get in the house. They get in the house and like, you know, they always kind of go towards the, the flies, go towards the windows and stuff. And we have like the, you know, pretty tall, like almost floor to ceiling windows. So she she can get up, you know, on the window ledge <clears throat> and she'll trap and kill the flies you and just like, hear and it eat them. like her <laughs> paw hit the window, like come. And then you look over and she's like <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Edward said, Marley is a typical home Pyrenees. Uh, he goes out in the yard and announces mm -hmm. he is on duty. Yep. 
uh, then patrols the yard. When he gets bored, he'll bark at cars. <laughs> yeah, yep. I feel like they just love attention too. You know, the pure paw and like they're barking, you know, some of it is just like <clears throat> they want the world to know like they're there, you know? That's right. Crystal said, what's the norm for them liking water? Freya loves baths and actually jumps in the tub with my mm -hmm. two-year-old. I haven't seen much information about them having a love for it. Normal for my labs, I've owned. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've never taken ours really anywhere where they like to get in like water, like to swim. Um, but ours definitely like to get in the water troughs uh, to cool off, um, especially when it gets hot here in the summer they'll get in the trough and like sit down and like literally look like Mac gets in and will sit down and like give you like a side eye like hey give me some privacy like he's like taking a bath you know like an old man taking a bath and he's like why are you why are you staring at me while I'm in the bathtub right doesn't he yeah why are you guys laughing at me no, we're not laughing at you <laughs> Terry said arrows can be in the house and he'll bark at the mailman down the road mm -hmm. when he pulls up to the box. Yep. Yeah. They can hear like the cars. And, yeah. Yeah. Monty, he's our, our rescue that we have. Um, and you know, he lives on our, like what we call our house side of the property and he can hear, I drive like a big, like diesel F two fifty, and, uh, he can hear when I'm coming in through the neighborhood, mm -hmm. he can hear my truck and he's always like waiting for me at the gate. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. If we all leave, he actually waits at the gate for all of us. He'll lay, he'll he'll lay there and sleep and like wait at the gate. Still hangs out wherever we are. Yep. <clears throat> oh gosh, no, Joanne, don't wish that evil on us. <laughs> Joanne said that the skunk is going to come back and double spray you. No, <laughs> I know I got him. I, I got him with the one shot, but. Um, you know, right in the behind. <laughs> Poor thing. It, it made me think of the 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 part on Forrest Gump. Something bit me right in the buttocks. Remember? <laughs> if you ever need any movie line quotes, this, yes, this guy right here has them all filed and ready to use. Crystal said it's awful when they get sprayed by skunks. Have to keep skunk shampoo Ooh, yeah. on hand. Yeah, luckily I, I'm not even sure. I mean, well, it was don't lucky. Say it. <clears throat> no, no, no. I, Millie didn't get sprayed that time. The skunk sprayed, but it didn't, it luckily didn't that get time. Millie. Yes. Well, I'm just saying that time it, even though the skunk sprayed, it didn't get on Millie. Like, I literally think that it sprayed the house. Like it smelled really bad. And like to the point here, here, I'll just be totally transparent. It was like three in the morning and I heard her barking and I knew it was a different bark. But I'm like, she's, she can handle it. Millie's, you know, she's full grown. She's a good guard dog. Like she'll, whatever it is, she's, she can handle it. I'm like, I'm too tired to get up. I'm not trying to get up out of bed at three in the morning. And then all of a sudden the skunk sprayed. I was like, oh my gosh, that smells horrendous. I can't stay in this room. I got to go handle this now. <laughs> it was really bad. I think, I think the skunk literally sprayed like the window. <clears throat> Phil said, uh, Jenna's new puppy will be going on trail walks through our woods. Must be ready to scare mm -hmm. off raccoons and foxes. Yep. Yep. Where are they? Are they in Kentucky? Or yes, they're Kansas? in Kentucky. Yep. Melissa is tuning in. Thanks for watching, Melissa. She said, uh, my Juliet, who is 11 months old, is pregnant with her first litter on her first heat. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 95% sure she's pregnant. Do you have any tips on how you can tell? Um, <clears throat> if it's her first heat, I mean, she wouldn't have any... Do we already have this discussion before? Are they called teats or nipples? I don't know. Mammary growth. Yeah. Um, that's really a pretty big indicator. Increased urination. Ours, for whatever reason, will jump up on us when they're pregnant, which is not a normal behavior for them. So it's like they almost get like a little aggressive with their demanding like pets and stuff. Like hormones and stuff, um, yeah. But really, it's the last like two weeks that they their abdomen just like quadruples, yep. you know. And then obviously, if you're feeling kicks, like 
but that's going to be the last like two weeks. So they're pregnant about 60 days. So I don't know the math on. Yeah. Dogs aren't pregnant for very long before Um, they give birth. But definitely if you know, when you think she got pregnant, I'm, I would start calculating a due date and kind of keep an eye on that. We did ultrasound for Mabel, her very first litter. We actually posted it online and people thought we were having our sixth child, but. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. That. Yeah, that's, that was. <laughs> that was bad. Yeah. We, and we didn't do it again because it doesn't give you a count. And then um, we've even got an x-ray. <clears throat> yeah, that's good information. And it wasn't accurate. It wasn't I mean, really I guess, accurate. I guess you could, you could do, it would be beneficial to at least confirm a pregnancy. In for your very first. Yeah, but but it's I wouldn't say a uh, so dog sonogram. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a dog sonogram isn't uh, beneficial if you're trying to no. determine how many puppies. But if you're just trying to confirm that the dog's pregnant, uh, it'll it'll do that. It'll yeah. confirm that she has puppies or, but um, it's not accurate in in because they have so many puppies and they're like so. It's it's difficult to to see all of them and to you know get an accurate count. Yeah. <clears throat> like when we did uh, Mabel's, what what was it? Yeah. Yeah. So she it said uh, the on the sonogram when Mabel's first litter it only showed four, but she ended up having six. So Edward said, uh, "Yep, Terry, mine barks at all comers. He's cool with the garbage truck ever since." We had a female yeah, driver and she said, hi, <clears throat> our, uh, our dogs hate the garbage truck, yeah. it, but, uh, Monty's starting to warm up to it a little bit because our trash guy, uh, brings treats now. Well, we live in an area <laughs> where we can pick the trash company. So we actually have trash like about three days a week. So our, cause there's like three different companies. Trash come. day is yeah. Friday, but the <clears throat> trash truck that comes on Wednesday or something, he doesn't like them. Like he knows, like if it's our trash truck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they do throw treats over the fence so melissa says she loves to bark when i go to sleep and we live in the city so it makes me paranoid because i don't want yeah. to piss off my neighbors yeah i mean <clears throat> you know i don't know i just kind of feel like sometimes maybe we care a little too much about what other people think like i'm sure it's not that bad yeah could be worse Terry said, Arrows uh, tries to, to make playmates with uh, of cr- crickets as well. Again, turns out yeah. badly for the cricket. One Paul will take that right out. Yep, yep. Uh, Mac loves to try to hunt down like lizards. And we get a lot of lizards here. Today, like Underneath like little geckos and stuff. Yeah. Uh, underneath because we have a ton of rocks in, in this area. So the you know get, little gecko lizards and stuff will run and hide under the rocks and Mac loves to try to like chase and catch those Gloria things. Over to get the one today because they had chased it through the fence, and Gloria was just standing there like, "What am I looking at?" And like Max over there, like. <laughs> <laughs> Phil said, uh, "Just took the dogs outside. Tucker's first job was a quick trip around the fence mm-hmm. uh, to chase off any deer that might be eating his grass." Yeah, we don't we don't get deer often in our on our property uh sometimes we'll jump the fence from like the neighbor's property and they might get 20 feet in on ours Mm -hmm. before the dogs notice and chase them off joanne said being a single mom i feel super safe with my peer her bark is intense that's how mabel's is mabel has the most aggressive bark of all of our great pyrenees and we've told stories a few times about monty we try not to schedule any workers to come when he's not here and I'm here alone, but it has happened a couple of times and I always feel safe. He physically gets in between me and the other person to make sure that, you know, yeah. nothing's going to happen. One AC guy literally wouldn't open the door to his truck. He's <laughs> like, hey, is it safe for me to get out? I'm like, I'm not sure but you can try. <laughs> <clears throat> See, Joanne said, uh, my, my twin sister and I throw movie oh, quotes no. around all the time. I'm your Huckleberry. Yes, that's my favorite. It's my favorite movie. Tombstone. Um, <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> I can't. Yes. 
Crystal said, Freya's parents live at a, a neighboring sheep uh, barn, and uh, he didn't know she was pregnant. Uh, she only has, or she only had three puppies and found out after they were born. Mm. Phil said, Tucker doesn't have, or have to bark at anyone that comes up our driveway. Um, <clears throat> quarter mile long our french bull bulldog takes care of that tucker is a quiet muscle in the pair that's that's like what monty is monty doesn't really bark that much uh he kind of comes in as like backup yeah yeah like he he's like the like what you said the quiet muscle like uh i feel like he moseys places like he he's not the first one to like run out to the fence and bark at stuff but he'll like he's alert he knows that it's happening but He's like waiting to see, like, do they really need me? Mm -hmm. Do I really need to go over there and bark? Like, or do they got it? Yeah. Terry said, regarding jumping, when I met, when I met Eros at the shelter, I was actually, or I, I had actually gone to look at a Great Pyrenees German Shepherd mm. mixed dog. What a jumper yeah. he was. No one wants a large jumping dog. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, we, we discourage that in ours and they don't really tend to want to do it much anyway. Uh, but like what Michelle was saying is that we've just noticed, I guess, just hormonally, uh, you know, just uh, when they're pregnant, they seem to be more inclined to want to jump. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just become like a a signal to us yeah. that um, we've got to, you know, confirm pregnancy so when they start when doing that. So when we take people over, if they're pregnant, we warn them and say, hey. We still discourage them from doing it when, even when they're pregnant. Um, but it just seems like that's the only time that right. they're actually wanting to jump on mm -hmm. people. Joanne said, uh, Naga went in heat once before I had her fix. Uh, she had a false pregnancy and was super protective of her toys, mm -hmm. burying them in the yard. I waited to get her fix at 18 months yeah. to let her fully grow. Yep. Yeah. That's a weird occur like occurrence. Our parent, my parents, neighbors schnauzer or some kind of little dog had a false pregnancy and just literally you would have thought the dog was pregnant and it wasn't and then it just like went away hmm. yep well hey guys uh if you have any uh last minute questions uh drop them down in the live chat we'd love to answer them for you uh we'll probably be ending the live chat here what's that oh yeah let's do millie's puppies real quick we'll wake them all up <clears throat> We'll wake them all up right before the end of the live stream. And let her <laughs> back in. Yes. And then let Millie back in to, to nurse them. So next week, <clears throat> all Millie's puppies will be playing and they will be yes. able to see. They'll be able to the see box. definitely next week. This week, not so much. <laughs> all right. Aww. Here comes Millie's puppies one at a time. <clears throat> Who's this? This is Mr. Black. He is really sweet. Yes. <laughs> like, wait, wait. Hey, by the way, uh, we've got all of the puppies except for one male and uh, two females are under deposit. And I'm still calling down our waiting list. Um, to you know secure deposit for them um <clears throat> so um if you're on our waiting list and you haven't gotten a call yet stay tuned and be ready to respond uh if you are on our you know if if you're on our waiting list and you already have gotten a text or email from me uh and you're interested like respond we have a lot there's so many people that join our waiting list and then just kind of ghost us so um if you're interested uh Join our waiting list and uh, be responsive when we reach out. So we're down to just three puppies. I, I can't tell you which ones are available. We haven't done selections yet, but basically we know how many males and how many females we have, you know, total. And then um, based off of what, you know, gender puppy people want, uh, I, I just secure that many deposits for that many males and females. And then we do our, our puppy selections at around six to seven weeks. So that'll be coming up. Um, in a few weeks here, and then we'll know which puppy goes, you know, to which home when they go home. But we won't have puppies <clears throat> available from this litter. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, we kind of already, you know, we turned off um, 
or like we shut down the waiting list for this year because uh, I, I still have, I don't know, probably 20 people to call through. Um, so we're pretty confident that uh, of those 20 people, you know, three of them will put a deposit on um, on the puppies. So, uh, but we are, uh, we've got the waiting list open for next year and, uh, you know, for 2024, 2025 and 2026 as well. I actually just had somebody uh, you know, join our waiting list for 2025. I can't believe it. I'm not that patient, <laughs> but it, you know, if you, if you're interested in one of our puppies, um, join the waiting list and we'll be in touch. All right, let's go back to Millie's puppies here. Who do you got? Mm -hmm. All right, here's Mr. Green. <laughs> so you can see at this age, they're a lot easier to take pictures of for our puppy yeah. portraits at two weeks old. Not so much. So you can see the markings on him a little bit if you really love Yeah, him. yeah. So guys. even <laughs> yeah, even Mr. Green has a little, just slightly more tan <clears throat> markings. It's like the most faded tan ever. But who we got next? <laughs> here's miss red yeah at this age it really starts to show like just how chill and i don't know what's another good word for it just like their temperament how easygoing they are mm -hmm. All right, here's Mr. Blue from Millie's Litter. Yes, Phil said that they're mellow. That's yeah. a good. That's a good word for it. Oh, yeah. Melissa, well, so you got to show us the hickey. Oh my god! <laughs> no. There's. Miss Pink? Oh, yeah. Oh, big yawn. There's Miss Pink. <laughs> They're starting to get uh, their freckle bellies, too. <clears throat> and this one's Mr. Orange. <laughs> and last but not least who do we got miss purple <clears throat> there's miss Pur miss purple yep so that's all of millie's puppies we'll let millie in here in a second to start nursing them again and let's see tracy said beautiful photo card and decal love it thanks uh jacob's family yeah uh yeah we mailed uh tracy her free sticker for joining our uh email list uh if, if you're interested in that we've uh you know got our our you know email newsletter uh if you join it and just give us your address we'll mail you a free uh willow ridge acres sticker uh, i think we've got a link for that in the description of this video or you can find it on our website to join the the newsletter awesome awesome well hey we're uh gonna jump off for tonight and uh and the the live stream right now uh but again tune in next week the puppies will be a lot more active uh millie's will probably be up in wrestling and Mays will be kind of doing what millie's are doing right now so uh, tune in next week, same time, same place, right here, 6.30 p.m., and uh, we'll see you guys then. Bye.